All right, writing the main body. Now, your page will look a little different just because you've basically got um, one lot of this information rather than four. The reason I've got all four boxes here is just to show that each focus question goes on a new page. Even if one of them goes on one page and a quarter, you start a fresh page um, for your next focus question. But otherwise, you don't need to worry about this looking different. So just to recap, each focus question has a separate page and a bold or underlined heading um, saying what the question is using size 12 basic font and double spacing for all of the writing. Now if we come down here, what, are, what is it going to look like? Well, let's start here actually. Each of your four or three focus questions, the page will generally look like this. What the focus question is in bold at the top or underlined, an introduction in its own paragraph, which is just a few sentences. Then you're going to go into your two or three key points, each with a separate paragraph, and then a summary, um, like a conclusion at the end. Right, and then you repeat that for your next question, your next one, and your next one if you have four. So what makes up each of these um, paragraphs? So we're going to go a little bit more in depth here. So the introduction should be about two to three sentences um, about the focus question and the key points being made. So just like with any introduction, you want to um, outline or bring up the key things that will be spoken about um, in the coming um, paragraphs. Each paragraph, so the key points here, should contain or look something like this. Now this is just a rough guide. Right, for those of you who are studying English and things like that, I'm sure that you can word this um, really, really well and don't need to follow this specifically. But if you're not so confident with your writing, then just follow each of these steps for each paragraph and that will ensure that you've got the right information. First of all, you should have a topic sentence. So you're basically stating what the key point is that's being made. All right then going into the details and the explanation. So you almost capture the reader's attention here by saying something or making a bit of a bold claim or something that was found. Then you go on to expand, giving details and ex explain what that, that means and followed by the key informational findings, primary, secondary, evidence, quotes, opinions, data, discussion. All right? Um, and that structure should be used for your, if you have three key points, or sometimes you only have two key points per page, sometimes you might have four, but generally it's around about three, so that's why I've got three here. Then at the end, you do have a concluding paragraph, <clears throat> excuse me, as well. So first of all, you're going to briefly summarise your answer to the focus question. So this is a question, so you now want to answer it. You might say, in summary, do da 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 da. Yes, in fact, um, research suggests that that is correct, or so and so um, cafe owners have found this. All right, so you're going to answer it. Then, what shows really good critical analysis is if you can then link these findings to what it is suggesting about your major question. All right, because remembering that our focus questions help us as a whole to answer our major question. So, so far, just from this focus question, what is it suggesting about your major question or hypothesis? Right, so you could even say something like, so far, this research suggests um, that in fact, yes, um, cafes should add more healthy items to their menus. All right, it's just making that link back to your major question. Now, in terms of deciding what is going to go in these key points, um, I've got some suggestions over here. So let's just scroll over back up a little bit. Okay. If your focus question that you have here leans towards a yes or no type of answer, all right, then it is likely and a good idea to have one of your paragraphs focusing on yes and one focusing on no. All right, so each paragraph would have a range of sources and findings and things, but
but it would be grouped together. So all the information that suggests yes about your question fits in one and all of the research that suggests no fits in the other one. However, if your question is not necessarily uh, yes or no kind of based, the other option is if it's a more like a how is this impacting or why is this happening or what is the history of this or etc then you divide your information into the key findings or the key information that you want to write about where you've got a good chunk of information about these key points, the key points you want to make. All right, and in that case, again, you might have two or you might have three. Um, now, that shouldn't say yes, that should just say paragraph. And again, each paragraph should have a range of secondary and primary sources that link with that key finding or that key point. So just decide based on your questions um, whether it is these sorts of key points or whether it is these sorts of key points. Now in terms of actually writing it, what I suggest you do is create a skeleton. Right? Now what I mean by a skeleton is you almost have um, these, this sort of style for each of your questions before you go and flesh it out and actually write it. I think it's quite hard to start with your question and then just go ahead and start typing in and writing. I think it's best to plan it first and what I mean by skeleton is this here is the bones of your focus question and then you're going to add the meat and the flesh which is all the detail. Okay. So what I'm suggesting is you obviously put in your focus question, intro, all right, you can just write intro. You don't necessarily have to put much in there for the skeleton. We know you're going to have an introduction. But what would be good is to write key point one and write just a heading or a dot point. What is that key point going to be? Is that a yes and a no or is it a um, the key finding type thing? So you know the, the key headings you're going to write about. All right, do that for each of your focus questions. Then when you've done all your research, you come back and you read through, let's say you've got eight articles online, read through your articles and whenever you find something useful, you take it out, you copy it and you paste it under whichever of these parts of the skeleton for whichever question it fits. All right, And do that until you've used up all of your sources, primary and secondary. And already you will then have all this information under each of the headings before you sit down to start writing it. Okay, That way you can actually compare and contrast who agrees with who. Um, is there any that you need to change because you've got just no information about it? Do you need to add a new question? Things like that. So I always suggest start with the skeleton, add in, copy and paste in all of your information then go back and actually write it into proper sentence form. Just remember when you do copy and paste things in to add the reference or include the reference there so you don't have to go back hunting for it after. Alright, good luck. That's the main body.